That was a good point, though. I, I do like how everybody's acting like this guy. We just They pulled him out of nowhere like he was managing a Ruby Tuesdays before this or something <laughs> like that. I mean, the guy was like, he played football for a long time. He's got knowledge. At a high level. We, 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 got, we made Freddie Kitchens a head coach. He had been like a quarterback's uh, coach like the year before that. And then all of a sudden, he wasn't exactly a leader of men. Like, you didn't, he, he wasn't like Braveheart inspiring people to run over, <laughs> to run over the wall or anything oh, like true. that. It was Freddie Kitchens. He, he, and nobody, but because he came up through like a more... Like a, just a more acceptable way because he was a coordinator for it to a degree right. for a second. We were just like, oh well, then, well that's okay. That guy's perfectly. And Ursa is an easy target too. It's, it's, you know, he, it's easy to throw darts at this guy. So yeah. when he stood up there and looked at the establishment and said, you know what, screw you guys, I'm doing it my way. Yeah, I yeah. think he put right. even more. They don't like that. I on. got two, I got two but things. guys. I got two things really quick here. Two things really quick, and this is a quote from um, one of the best books. Doom. If you haven't read the Doom books. Not the movies. The right. books are awesome. Mm, okay. Uh, so there's there's a really good quote on here of, about leadership, and I'll give you a, a real world example. It says the difference between a good administrator and a bad one is about five heartbeats. Good administrators administrators make uh, immediate choices. They can usually be made to work. A bad administrator, on the other hand, hesitates, diddles around, asks for committees for research and reports. Eventually, he acts in a way which creates serious problems. A bad administrator is more concerned with the reports than with the decision. He wants a hard record which he can display as an excuse for his errors. Oh, they depend on verbal uh, orders. They never lie about what they've done. If their verbal orders cause, uh, cause problems, they surround themselves with people able to act wisely on the basis of verbal orders. Often, most important piece of information is that something has gone wrong. Bad administrators hide their mistakes and it's too, until it's too late to make corrections. Um, when you talk about Jeff Saturday in the situation, I'll give you a, a real world example. I, I was in this industry and I've, and I, I've been at 92.3 The Fan since day one. I started off answering the phones. I started off Interning, I put stages up at KNR for a year. Um, I, I interned hours. I helped run shows. I did a lot of different things. And at the end of my internship, I still didn't get offered a job. I went to uh, 92.3 The Fan, and I worked my way up from answering the phones to running the board to eventually having my show on the weekend. In this industry, I still don't have a regular everyday show. So what I did is I made everything possible to go through that show and I said, I'm gonna make that one day great. And through that process, the whole barbershop thing came, came to pass. One day, um, I realized to myself and I said, no one's gonna give you, uh, uh, no one's gonna give you some sort of magic shining armor. No one's gonna give you a job. You gotta go out and earn it. And there's people that, has, that got shows in this city that they've had them forever, but they're not better than me. You see, sometimes you can't be humble. Sometimes you got to talk your talk. And I've earned everything I've gotten. And then one day, there was a young brother who reached out to me. He was coming from OCB. He said, G. Bush, man, I love what you're doing. You're doing your thing, man. Can you just listen? Can you just listen to my, my, my podcast? I said, okay, I'll listen to it. Young brother was great. I said, man. This dude is awesome, man. He shined. He just sounded different. I said, man, this dude got it. He, I listened to every one of his podcasts, and, and he had it with a group of people. And when he was done, he said, G. Bush, man, I really want, I really want to come, and, and can I be on your show just to show you? And I brought him on. And I said, all right, here you go. We brought him on, and he still didn't have a job at this point. And I brought him on and I interviewed him myself. I said, I'm going to put you on the barbershop. I'm going to show you this. Sometimes you got to be independent. And then a couple months later, he said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm applying for different jobs. I ain't got a hit yet. And I said, you know what? I'm going to reach out to somebody I know. I reached out to the radio station. I said, man, look, I don't really endorse nobody. But at the end of the day, this dude, he going to work hard. He going to do what he need to do. And he going to do it at a high level. I said, if you're going to hire anybody, you should hire him. And to their credit, they did hire him. And when he came in, I talked to him and I said, yo, bro, look, man, you just do your thing. Continue to work, grind, and, 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 and definitely, I'm not going to talk to you too much. I'm not going to say nothing because I don't want them to think that the reason you here is based on my merit. It's based on what you can do and how you're going to move. 
So he became one of the best dudes uh, over at the fan. He been, became a producer. He worked out there. And then there was an opportunity that came along in television. And guess what? <laughs> I say he does his thing over there. I think he's a great opportunity. He could go over there and do it. And if you don't know who that young man is, that's Earl. There, Earl. It's Earl. Earl the Pearl. Earl the Pearl was the guy. And you know what I said for myself? I said, listen, I had to do it for 12 years. And it's only a couple of minorities in this business. It ain't about how long I had to put work in. Because if you doing what you supposed to do as a person that's going to put on for other people and you really want your people to be on and you really want to see the, the, the game change, it's about who you help put on. So if we want to make progress, what are we doing? Earl ain't supposed to have to wait 12 years. That ain't what the game plan is. Earl shouldn't have to work as hard as I should, he had to work. He shouldn't have to go through the interviews and people telling me. I didn't went to interviews and they told me, oh, I was just over here looking at your resume. I was giving you resume tips. After you done saw me work for you for a year, I made that my decision. I said, listen, it ain't about me. It's about how many other people can you get an opportunity. And if you just Saturday, sometimes you shouldn't have to wait in line with a bunch of other people. And if you want to make progress in life, if you doing something, he shouldn't have to wait 12 years. He should get he should go and do his thing and get two years and go to the top of the game. But at the end of the day, you got to want to see other people grind and get there. Everybody got different paths. Everybody got different places and you a hater. If you sitting there saying I want somebody to go through tough times just because I had to that ain't the way you're well, supposed to look at it. Great point. Hey, hey G. The, my, my only follow-up to that would be, I, it's a great story about Earl, and, and we all love Earl, but I don't I don't think it's the same example as Jeff Saturday. because And even though I'm like, I, I what I said before was that a coward didn't pay any dues either. <clears throat> but a lot of people would say, well, Jeff Saturday is preventing the Earls of the world from getting a job. And that's a lot of the, compl- Bill Cowher's complaint is different, but a lot of the complaint is that we continue to have this problem of minority coaches not getting an opportunity and here's Jeff Saturday, who did not pay any dues. Now, maybe you're right. Maybe some people don't have to pay dues. That That is the way it works, unfortunately. You know, I know I was ticked off years ago that I didn't get a job in New York, and I got passed over for guys who didn't pay any dues, that I was better than, but he had a bigger name, so he got a job than me. So, so and whatever. That's part of, of, of every industry. There's nepotism, and people get opportunities. But let's not put Jeff Saturday, and it's fine that he got the job. But I don't think we need to put Jeff Saturday up on some pedestal as he just took a different route to it. Like, there Bull. there are legitimate complaints about this that other people who have worked hard and deserve the opportunity. There's no proof that Jeff Saturday is a better head coach than some of these other guys that haven't gotten opportunities. That's Jeff, still fair to complain about. Yeah, Bull, you're right. We shouldn't put him on a pedestal, but we shouldn't denigrate him either. Yeah, like people hate. Like, well, I'm not they, denigrating him. No, I know you're not, but there are yeah. plenty of people yeah. that are. Right. I don't know that anybody put him on a pedestal. I think what what G is saying, and I couldn't agree more. What G is saying is, you know, I had to go to Hazard, Kentucky, and I worked in Hazard, Kentucky for right. three and a half years, starting at twelve thousand dollars a year. Like you, I it's been my mission in this business to get as many people as I know. That have uh, that I've come in contact with interns that I see a spark in, right. that I see the same ambi- ambition that I had. I've gone out of my way. It's been my goal during my career to have as many people that I've helped get into the business as years I've been in the business. My goal is one a year. Well, I exceeded that at ESPN. I exceeded that uh, by a f- I-, I could work fifty years and I'm fine. But it warms my heart when I can find a job for somebody. It doesn't have to go through Hazard, Kentucky. The, 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 I, I agree, Forrest, Jay. Derek I think Forrest, we... who was, uh, you know, Derek was yeah. the, the sports anchor at Channel 5. Mm-hmm. A terrific young man. He was my intern at, at ESPN. I actually got him hired at my old station at in Hazard, Kentucky. He was the first African-American ever on air in that market, and it was 2000. It was after the year 2000. Is that the setting of the Dukes of Hazard? No, that's Hazard County, Georgia. Oh, all right. But it's just it's pretty guys, much the same thing. But... but 
But well, Jay, Derek paid his dues, and Earl is paying his dues now. In some, they are. Jeff Saturday and, didn't pay any dues. Oh, he didn't play for 15 years in the NFL at an elite level. That, those are dues. Yeah, that, that, those are dues. No, it's not the same. It's not the it dues is for the coaching. Same thing. It's not the same. No, it's it not. is the same it, thing. It, well, it's not the, like they brought him like 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 Mike said. It's not like they pulled him out of. You know, I use, he, he, I use Ruby Tuesdays. I use Ruby Tuesdays. It's it, 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 see this. this so you be mad this, if you were a coach right now who's been paying his dues and hasn't got an opportunity? No, fuck, that's negative energy. Be, I'm going to put my positive energy into worrying about me getting an opportunity, not the opportunities that other people have. And, and that's a that's victim, I know. But black candidates are mentality. not getting the opportunity. But well, black well, candidates are not getting well, the here's, opportunity. Well, here's the thing, though. No, here's the thing. You, here, you Why are you spend, rolling your eyes? That's true. Here's the thing. You are can black spend, can, J, G, are black candidates getting the opportunity? No, they don't. No, here's the thing. Are they're they, not. Are, no. in, the, in the right numbers? No. So, so They're not. And, and no, that's, not even close. And, and boom, that's, why I, brought, that's yeah. why I brought up the example. In, in our industry, there are three to four minority candidates in this city. Yeah. Right? And my job as a minority who I know I had to work and I come from untraditional background. I started on YouTube, but they wouldn't give me an opportunity. So I know what it is to say you have to go X, Y, Z, A, B, C before we'll give you an opportunity here. So for me, I knew I had to go more along. And but here's what I'm doing. I'm trying to change it because the new wave of media ain't somebody that's coming from the traditional. You got to go to journalism school. You got to go over here. You got to give your free labor away over here. The new wave is what we doing right now because the beat right, report, but Earl is still paying his dues. Is he no, not? No, no. Er, Earl is on. Yeah, ain't no pay. No I know dues. that, but he's still paying it. But Earl is not where he wants. Er, Earl still has higher goals in his but, career, but, so he's but, paying. But, his I dues. think he's doing extremely but, well. But, Earl, you're happy here, aren't you? Oh, you're killing it, bro. He loves because, it here. Because here's a, my goal is Earl at least can be to a point where you like I'm this age. I'm 41 and just got on. Earl is younger than me. So it took me 12 years and be 40 years old to hit my yeah. stride. When there's a lot of people in this industry get their first look 25, 26, sure. mm -hmm. 27. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. And there's a lot of African American coaches. Coach Deion Sanders did it the same way. Coach Prime did it the same way. People laughed at Deion Sanders. You a coach? Hi, when you hi, who when you coach? Ain't you Deion, the flashy guy? Nah, I'm Coach Prime, and I'm going to show you I win state championships here, and I'm going to jump to Jackson State. They ain't got no experience level, but when you, are, when you are a Hall of Famer and when you play the game at that high of a level, you are a genius. Those play, whether we believe it or not, those players are genius the way they Well, who are you talking about? Jeff Saturday's not a Hall of Famer. What, what I'm saying, Jeff Saturday is he's is, a pro bowler. He's the, he's the center who's the smartest okay. position on offensive of line. Sure. He calls the projections I just think for Peyton All I'm Manning. saying, guys, I don't, I don't think these comparisons of, of us as veteran broadcasters trying to help young people, which we all do, and it's great. I don't think that's the same thing as Jeff Saturday. I don't attempt to help being, anyone, Adam. Being I didn't claim a job that. without pay. And again, I don't care. I don't care. Good for Saturday if he does well, fine. I'm just saying, if I'm if I'm a coach in a league that's been busting my balls and 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 coaching hard and doing a great job and I deserve an opportunity, I'd be a little ticked that, that because this guy's buddies with the he didn't get the job because he's great grinding. in football. Keep he got grinding. the job because he's buddies with the owner. Keep grinding. Worry about yourself. Yeah, but Jay, You'll not every opportunity. Every, not no, everybody you know gets what? an opportunity, no matter how hard they you grind. You know what, Bull? Not everybody yeah. in life gets a trophy. It's it Who is a meritocracy. At some day it is a, at some point it is a meritocracy. Oh, so we he can, wasn't running a subway train. He spent a life in football. I don't football. know why you keep bringing that up. I'm not suggesting he was running a subway train. I Nobody's know, but, suggesting that. But I'm saying he got an it did he get an he got an unfair it, it that's life. There are unfair advantages, but he did get an unfair advantage because of his friendship with the owner. It's it, there's or, no debating that. Or, but didn't his career as a successful NFL player have something to do with that? Oh, Deion Sanders was a much better NFL player. He had to co he had to coach in some small school that nobody wanted to coach at. How come he didn't get an NFL no, no, job? No, 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 no. That's, that's not that's true not, at all. That's not Deion no, Sanders. Deion, Deion Sanders, Sanders has already had offers to coach in no, the no, no, NFL. No, no, Deion Sanders. Well, now, did that. no, not, no, he, yeah, but, but no, no, no. He had. Go he ahead. Had, he did that to elevate yes, historically did. black colleges. It was intentional. He got his sons. He coached his sons. So, and then his sons, when they could have went to D1 schools, he said, no, you're going to come over here with me to We're Jackson State so we can, and, and we can make a difference. And I agree, G. 
but nobody was offering him an NFL head coaching contract before this. That's that's well. The, that's rea- the, case. the reality of the situation, I think, is this: in yeah. life, people bust their asses all the time. Just because you bust your ass doesn't mean you're going to get the dream job that you want. Right. I mean, this is a real world situation. Who's Most debating people, that? I think what you're saying is. What was I'm the saying Jeff got an unfair for- advantage. That's it. He did get an unfair advantage. Well, well, Earl, but I that's disagree. life, but he Earl did. Had, Earl had an unfair advantage because he knows me. Earl didn't get an unfair advantage. Guys, Earl let's was solve, working let's hard all already. This. We're all great guys. Let's all solve yeah, this afterwards. In a, in a very Everything's fine. Today. No big deal. Let's all solve this later. Poor Mikey's been over there You're waving his ad reads facts. so I that we can stay it. on, on right. the air and keep right. making everyone wrong. happy right now. McNuggets, you better read that because we're running out of time. We're going to read this and we actually